It's tough to find a place more west coast in Canada than Vancouver Island, British Columbia. And in 2016, a new whiskey distillery opened up in Victoria called Macaloni's Caledonian Canadian Island Distillery. This distillery has had the highs of winning many multiple world whiskey awards for its single malt, its triple distilled pot still whiskey, and its peated new make spirit. But it's also had the lows of a long drawn out legal battle with the Scotch Whiskey Association over its name. Today, they go by the name Macaloni's Island Distillery. And in my opinion, they're making some of the most important and interesting whiskey in Canada. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing the Nebraska Single Malt Canadian Whiskey, a whiskey I think serves as quite possibly the best introduction to this distillery. My name is Matt, this is Whiskey on the West Coast. Eight years ago, Graham McElhone founded his namesake distillery and is one of two on Vancouver Island to actually use Forsyth copper pot stills that have been installed for making their whiskey, the other one being Shelter Point up in Campbell River. Now, Macaloni's exclusively uses BC grown barley to make their whiskey, which I think is pretty cool. Now, Macaloni enlisted the services of the legendary and sadly late Dr. Jim Swan when starting the distillery. Dr. Swan brought, was brought on as a, a consultant to help set up the whiskey maturation program at Macaloni's. Jim has left a mark on many new whiskey distillers from all over the world and is responsible for the creation and use of STR casks, shaved, toasted, and then recharred red wine casks. It's a cask type that can assist in making younger whiskey seem more mature and approachable at a younger age. This would help these young distilleries get their whiskey out to market sooner, which is important with the massive upstart costs of starting a new distillery. Some of the other notable Dr. Swan distilleries that he worked with include Kilhoman, Lindors, Amroot, Milk and Honey, Cavalan, amongst others. So you really had a big impact. So what makes this new Macaloni's Nebraska such a great introduction to this distillery? Well, the first thing I noticed was the price. This single malt whiskey retails for about $85 Canadian in British Columbia. That price stands out because it is much lower than the other Macaloni products in their range. Whiskies from Macaloni's usually start around $125 Canadian, so that means this is about $40 less than typical, which is great because that means a lot more people could potentially try this whiskey than otherwise would have. The other reason I think the Nebraska is a great introduction to Macaloni's is because I think it's really indicative of kind of their house style. And what I mean by that is Macaloni seems to use Portuguese red wine STR uh, barriques more than any other cast type putting Jim Swan's methods to good use. I think we should take a look at the vital stats and get to the review. The Macaloni's Island Distillery, Nebraska Canadian Single Malt from Vancouver Island, British Columbia on Canada's West Coast. It's not an age stated, but I believe the new make for this whiskey was made in 2019, uh, which would make it about four to five years old. However, the legal minimum in Canada to be called whiskey is three years. So we're just gonna assume probably that it's three years or up. It's 46% ABV, it's non-chill filtered, it's natural color, it runs $85 Canadian BC, and it's matured in Portuguese red wine STR barriques. All right, let's get to the nose. Got my trusty Victoria Whiskey Festival glass here. That was such a great time. I highly suggest if anyone has a chance to get to Victoria Whiskey Festival, do it. You can even visit Macaloni's while you're there. Which I haven't done. Why haven't I done that? Okay, moving on, back to the whiskey. Fruits, fruits and spice off the top of the nose there. Raspberry, like some red fruits, like possibly cranberry. But there's like a firm toasted oak spice to the nose. Some vanilla, toffee, caramel, all that probably coming from the recharring of that cask. The oak spice kind of dance and it's hitting again. Along with some more like herbaceous notes along the lines of like fennel or um, like a little licorice, like a black licorice sort of vibe. Yeah. I'd say this, this nose is actually a bit richer and more approachable than it has any right to be being, again, about like three to five years old, let's say. Oftentimes the young unpeated whiskies can come off 
feeling more mature and more rounded, uh, especially if there's like sherry casks uh, involved, but this doesn't have the benefit of the peat. So it's actually, it's performing really well on the nose. Also kind of pick up some like tiramisu and maybe a light citrus in there too. Interesting nose, engaging nose. Not the most bold, it's a little subtle, but there's a lot to pick through there. All right, on the palate. First impression, approachable, rounded, nice, like lightly creamy mouthfeel. Yeah, overall, a pleasant first introduction, second sip. Honey, cocoa, and sort of that little bit of that black licorice as well. Honestly, it evokes like almost like a um, dark chocolate covered black licorice, like those two things combined. There's some peppering, like some almost along the lines of like cayenne pepper on the outside of my tongue. Toffee, caramel. And when I mention the pepper, it's not to say that it's hot. It's just a bit of spice. It's, it's really nicely balanced with those sweet tones like the honey and, and um, the cocoa. Um, and then the bitterness of that dark chocolate. Yeah, that's, that's really working well. Hmm. Toffee, caramel. The malt is still present um, through the cask influence, which is important um, because oftentimes red wine casks can be a, a little strong. They, they can overpower a, a distillate. I don't think that's happening here because I'm still picking up uh, the malt uh, grain through this. Yeah, everything is wrapped up really nice, even on like the finish right now. It's a rich finish. It's underpinned by, again, that like strong toasted oak uh, backbone, bringing some spice. Now that's what's lingering right now on my palate is this like lingering ba uh, baking spice. The malt's still kicking around in there. And I'd say even a little bit more like a dark chocolate. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually that's really lovely. Um, it's definitely a whiskey that you could session. You could have a few more than one or two glasses of this really easily. As you probably noted, I've already taken quite a few sips of this. Um, one of the things I would say, it doesn't have a tremendously long finish. That's not really what this whiskey is doing for me. If I wanted a Macaloni's product that has a longer finish, I might go towards some of their locally peated fare. Uh, however, this is really interesting. It's actually quite engaging. And it gives us a really good kind of starting point for um, what Macaloni's has to offer. What does this do well? Well, it's a great introduction to their whiskey and what seems to be their host style at a lower price than their other offerings, while also doing it with an integrity presentation at 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural color, doing all those things uh, a whiskey nerd like myself really loves to see. Now, is this my favorite Macaloni's whiskey? No, they make some really cool single cast products, some really interesting experimental stuff. I really love the important work they're doing with local peat. Um, however, I really think that if I have had any criticisms of Macaloni's in the past, it started with price. Uh, cost of entry was just too high to really take a flyer on uh, a random bottle here or there. Um, and it's understandable that their prices were high. You know, uh, distillery costs a lot of money to start up, and so does fighting the Scotch Whiskey Association over a name. It bankrupted the former owners of Glenora Distillery in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Thankfully, Macaloni's has avoided a similar fate. Um, however, this lower price on this whiskey really helps address that criticism I've had in the past. So this is a really positive development. Um, I really would also love to see Macaloni's settling into a consistent core range of whiskeys like the Glenloy that they have, like this Nebraska. I think this could be a really positive thing to have a little more brand recognition because in the past, 
I felt a little confused about what their actual core range is because the names have just changed so often. I love all the experimental aspects of the distillery, uh, but it's truly been hard to track when you compare it to another distillery like Shelter Point. Finally, there's two more things that I'm just hopefully optimistic that might happen in the future with McAloo's, things I'd love to see. One of them is to have a core range X bourbon release that we can just really get to know the distillate character a bit better through. That would be really cool. And we could watch that evolve over the batches and over the years. Um, that would be really exciting to have. The second is much harder to provide and it's a much bigger ask, but I'd love to see, since we're eight years from the start of Macaloni's, I'd love to see a 10 year old released in 2026 for the 10th anniversary. That might not be possible. Perhaps the year, a few years after 2026, there was a lot of casts sold at the beginning of the distillery to help fundraise. And I understand that they might not have the inventory or the stocks to do it right away. But sooner rather than later, it'd be lovely to have an age stated Macaloni's product to really, you know, put in our glass and really dig into and see what some maturity, what some, some actual oxidative aging does to this spirit in good oak. All in all, I'm super excited to see a release like this Nebraca from McElroy's that seems to be doing so much right. This approach should certainly win some new fans to the distillery. If I'm gonna give this a score right now, and it's tough to do, uh, this is only my second time having the Nebraca, I'm gonna give it a score of about 84 out of 100, which for a young whiskey like this is outstanding. There's so much promise and so much potential here. I'm really excited for what the future has in store for Macaloni's. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for watching this far. I wanna ask you, what do you look for in a new distillery when you're considering picking up a bottle, taking a chance, trying something new that you haven't had before? What, what's something you look for that makes you go, yes, I'm gonna buy a bottle from that distillery? Have you ever tried Macaloni's and what are your thoughts? And also, does the lower, lower price on this whiskey entice you to possibly pick up a bottle where you may not have done so in the past. Thank you so much to all those who like, share the videos, comment on them. I love engaging with you guys and, and I try to get to all the comments that I can. Thank you so much to my Patreon members that support me in that way. I'm gonna raise this glass to everyone who watches Whiskey on the West Coast and from the West Coast, Slunge. <laughs>